The rap world is undergoing a reckoning at the moment, as everyone is looking at the dark secrets that are spilling out. With the news that Diddy might be going away for life, people are now questioning who else might be in line to have their private lives exposed, with the terrible things that they've done to others coming to light and potentially ruining their reputation. And at the moment, it's not just one individual under scrutiny, but it's rap's real power couple who are being placed under the microscope, as they are now facing accusations that range from behind the scenes political manipulation to even murder. It's your boy Luesta, and this is the disturbing alleged double life of Jay-Z and Beyonce. During a recent interview with Piers Morgan, R&B singer and conspiracy theorist Jaguar Wright made several allegations. Although she had been brought on the show to discuss the diddler and how she had been calling him out for years, she went majorly off script and started talking about Hove and the former Destiny's Child singer turned megastar. Why there is no vindication for me? Because for four years I've been screaming, not just Diddy, but Diddy and Jay-Z are monsters and the victim making machine kept going on. When Piers pointed out that Hove hadn't responded to all the rumors going around about their friendship after Diddy's arrest, Wright claimed that Jay's underhanded tactics and sneaky ways of avoiding direct involvement have allowed him to stay on top in the industry. That's what he does. He starts little fires everywhere, forces everyone involved to go and carry water while he sneaks away without a response. That changes now, Sean. You must respond. Rather than say he was just an accomplice to evil, she said that in reality, Jay was the connective tissue between many of the big names who have been involved in horrific acts. Harvey Weinstein, Jeffrey Epstein, Robert Kelly, Sean Combs have one person in common, Sean Carter. This has been a fist of tyranny that has been punching through our culture and our society for decades. It must stop. She even claimed that there are people ready to come forward with their stories, adding fuel to a conspiracy theory that's recently gained a lot of attention. One involving their alleged connection to the tragic death of another prominent R&B artist. I have three victims right now who are willing to give testimony about not only what Mr. Carter has done to them, but his wife as well. They're a nasty little couple. They do nasty things. Important. Keeping people against their will, putting people on planes while they're unconscious just like Aaliyah got on that plane unconscious. Now, if you were looking for that portion of her interview with the British journalist anywhere else on YouTube, you wouldn't find it. Because after she made those comments, Morgan got hit with a cease and desist and was made to censor his allegedly uncensored show. Well, Jack, you were right, unexpectedly made several serious allegations about Jay-Z and Beyonce during that interview. As I said in the moment, they were not present to respond or defend themselves. But now they have. Their lawyers contacted us to say that those claims were totally false and have no basis in fact and we've therefore complied with the legal request to cut them from the original interview. Editing, in editing interviews is not something we do lightly at a show called Uncensored, like the proverbial cries of fire in a crowded theatre. There are legal limits on us too and we apologise to Jay-Z and Beyonce. After it was pulled from air and Morgan had this tail between his legs, their lawyer Alex Spiro labelled the claim as clearly false. There's rumours and then there's nonsense and this is one step further, he told TMZ. This is a pointed and formal accusation of something. I felt it needed to be responded to. I think somebody reported it was a cease and desist. It wasn't that. It was quite bluntly an ultimatum, which is to remove that false accusation that's demonstrably false or a court is gonna order you to. So I think he made the wise choice and acted accordingly. Some people agreed with their legal team that you couldn't just make claims like this without any consequences. But there were some who felt that this made Jay-Z and Beyonce look way more guilty than they would otherwise and maybe the damage had been done. Done. Where there's smoke, there's fire. It's too late to edit it out. The internet lives forever. And I mean, they're right. Once you put something onto social media, it takes on a new life of its own. And these days, there's a lot of people who are wondering now if Jay-Z and Beyonce weren't just in cahoots with Puff, but were just as bad as the diddler himself. Because even after the threats of legal action from Jay and Bay's legal team, Jaguar continued to argue that if Diddy was brought to justice, they would be too. That's always been my focus. They're one and the same. Tell me something. When you have a peanut butter jelly sandwich, if it's just peanut butter, it's just peanut butter. If it's just jelly, it's jelly. When you put it together, it become a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And, and the taste is undeniable. You're saying Diddy and Jay-Z is peanut butter and jelly? Peanut butter and jelly. 
Let's deal with the sandwich. As opposed to jumping on the bandwagon, it should be noted that this is definitely the first time that she leveled these claims at Hove and Co. Instead, Jaguar, who sang backing vocals on Jay-Z's Unplugged album, has been claiming that Hove abused her and others for years. Tom Carter is just as bad as the diddler. And I know that for a fact. I got the scars to prove it. You wanna know what a box cutter feels like going into your skin and ripping you? I can tell you how it feels. Y'all ain't seen shit. That Cassie shit, that's nothing. Are you trying to say like Jay-Z put hands on you? I'm saying Sean Carter remembers everything he did to me and he's got it on too. Just like Diddy. It's gonna be the woman that give him in the end. Of course, there are some people who would discredit Jaguar right. Throughout the years, she has shown signs of instability, such as throwing her son's ashes at people during an argument before smearing them on her own skin. Oh my dear son. Oh my dear son. Oh my son. Oh we're, we're gonna have they're all dead. No, they're, they're all dead. 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 But as hard as that is to accept, she has been proven right in other ways. From Diddy's secret freak offs, right down to the ingredients of the cocktail that Diddy used to sedate the participants in these events. It's a veterinary drug, it's a horse tranquilizer. Now, gay men have been using this for years. If you went to a gay party or a gay rave, there were certain drugs that you would always find on hand Viagra, Special K, and cocaine. But as headline grabbing as what she has to say is, Wright is ultimately only one voice in the crowd of people who have suggested that there's something seriously warped going on behind the scenes in Ho's life. Right down to fellow 90s hip hop artists like Lord Jamar. According to him, Ho's indiscretions were a lot better disguised than Diddy's. But the fact that he started dating Beyonce after meeting her when she was just 17 years old, as well as rumors that he got with Foxy Brown when the rapper was 15 and he was 27, should have rang alarm bells. You know, I, I, I will say that Jay-Z, if he was doing ill sh like that, he was more quiet about it. You know what I mean? But then, if we be real with ourselves, it was kind of abnormal when he got with Beyonce. Like, she was pretty young when he got with her. There's rumors that he was messing with Foxy Brown when she was pretty young you know so there's a lot of those rumors around but if you ask jamar this situation is scarily common when it comes to these high-powered celebrities and jay is just one of many people that he had heard some dark things about you know i'm not gonna lie when certain people get to a certain level of fame i don't know why but you start to hear little sh about certain people sometimes. If you really think about most of your top celebrities, black celebrities, rappers, I feel like I've heard a rumor damn near about all of them. It could be. Or it could be that motherfuckers gotta join a club in order to get to a certain level. Everybody that goes past a certain point, you'll hear a little, have I heard a little shit about Jay-Z? Yup. The whole Foxy Brown situation is one that's had people concerned for a long time. Even when she appeared on his debut album in 1996, the track was recorded two years earlier when she was just 15. Then, as her first album emerged when she was 17, it was full of really explicit lyrics and had five co-writing credits for, you guessed it, Sean Carter. So at this point, Hove and Foxy's relationship seems to be an open secret. Even Jason Lee hinted towards it on a recent IG Live after Puffy's arrest. And then Diddy, that whole empire crumbling got a lot of y'all scared because your favorite rapper was sleeping with a 15 year old. But listen, here's the deal. But when it comes to Jay's questionable behavior around young women, it doesn't end with those he tries to court. Sometimes, he's threatening teenagers just to get their signature on a contract. During an appearance on Tyra Banks' show way back in the day, a 17-year-old Rihanna let it slip that Jay had been a little forceful in convincing her to sign to Def Jam back when he was still at the helm of the label. Like he said, there are two ways to leave here, either through the door with the deal signed or through this window, and we're on the 29th floor. <laughs> so you was like, where's the pen? Where's the paper? I'm signing. Yeah. This may have seemed like a lighthearted anecdote from Riri at the time, but considering everything we now know about how the top figures in hip hop operate, it lands a little differently. Particularly when you hear some of the stories about how Jay and Bay have allegedly moved through both the industry and their own secretive lives. 
The name Kathy Coriana White might not necessarily mean anything to you, but for those who are familiar with the dirt surrounding the Carters, she's one of the most interesting individuals in the whole situation. It was alleged that back in the day, Kathy and Jay-Z were engaged in an affair. Eventually, the press got wind of it and tried to follow up. But then, something horrible happened before the truth could come out. The story comes from former entertainment reporter Liz Crockett, who said that she was on the cusp of blowing the whole thing wide open when tragedy struck. In August of 2011, I was working as a senior editor for Star Magazine. My boss asked me to look into online blog reports claiming that a woman named Kathy Coriana White, who friends called Corey, was having an affair with Jay-Z. The blog that reportedly first broke the affair story was published by Hollywood Street King in an article titled, Busted, Jay-Z Caught Cheating on Beyonce with Kathy White in August of 2010. I managed to get a hold of Kathy at her job in New York over the phone. I then uncovered photos of Kathy hanging out with Jay-Z and Diddy at Tao Nightclub in Las Vegas. So I called her back and asked her about the photo evidence that debunked her initial claim that she had never met or hung out with Jay-Z. At this point, Kathy expressed to me that she would consider going public with her story. Days later, I tried to reach her at her work with no luck. I finally got a hold of one of her colleagues and I asked her if she knew why Kathy had been MIA. Her colleague shockingly told me she's dead. This story has gained plenty of attention over the years, even becoming the focus of a full video by Trap Lore Ross, who hinted that there might be more beneath the surface than we initially thought. But her friend and colleague, Claudia Jordan, has pushed back and has since tried to dead the story. Still, it continues to grow arms and legs, with people even theorizing that Ye hinted towards the situation between White and Jay-Z on the infamous track Blood on the Leaves when he said, he only wanna see that ass in reverse, $2,000 bag with no cash in your purse. Now you sit in court side, wifey on the other side, gotta keep them separated, I call that apartheid. Then she says she's pregnant, that's the night your heart died. Now you gotta go to your girl and report that. Main reason, cause your pastor said he can't abort that. Obviously, Ye and Kanye have a complex relationship that could be deserving of its own video one day. But it wouldn't exactly be the first time that he blew the whistle on his former mentor and said more than he should have. Because when they had fallen out in the past, Ye seemed to suggest that there was more reasons to be afraid of Hov. I've been sent here to give y'all my truth, even at the risk of my own life, even at the risk of my own success, my own career. Jay-Z called me, bro. You should have been called me. Jay-Z called me. Hey, bro. Jay-Z, I know you dead killers. Please don't sit them at my head. Just call me. Talk to me like a man. Much like Jaguar White, Ye is a man who the media has also labeled as crazy from time to time. So this pretty much went under the radar. But some believe he might have been onto something, especially since Kathy White isn't the only person in their circle to have mysteriously and suddenly passed away. The plane crash that killed a rising star in the world of music and film. Reaction today after Aaliyah and eight others were killed when their plane went down. The tragic death of Aaliyah is one that's grown very shadowy in recent years. For starters, it's recently emerged emerged that the beloved singer wasn't even conscious when she boarded the plane that crashed and claimed her life. They took her out of the van. She didn't even know she was getting boarded on a plane. She went on the plane asleep. And one person who's become increasingly wary of the official story is Dame Dash. To many people, he's the original hater when it comes to Hove, incapable of accepting what went wrong with their friendship at Rockefeller Records. But to many people, he's been seen as the man who was right about Hove all along. In case you didn't know, Dame was dating Aaliyah at the time of her untimely death. But that happened long after Hove had been trying to date her since she was 17. Whereas Dame didn't start dating her until she was 21. I didn't look at her like that because she was like a tomboy. I, she was little to me. But then one time I, uh, she was, uh, I guess we had the same bookkeeper and I walked past. And the thing about Aaliyah was like every time I saw her, she looked different. So she had different looks every time. And I was like, who the fuck is that? According to Dame, this was something that stayed with Jay long after his former friend and label co-owner hooked up with her and was the cause of some friction between them. Every Everybody knows that shit. Uh, like we were both like we were both. I heard it, but I didn't. Yeah, I didn't, but what they be trying to act mind. like he was like really fucking with now. He was sending flowers and doing all this shit that nigga. He was courting her, so we were both going hard, and, so we, right. en and we ended up in the same house Fourth, fourth of July. So we, were, for some reason, this, this day. Wait I a minute, you, Jay, and Aaliyah ended up in the same house. Yeah, that's funny. Uh, so it was like one day it might lean toward him and then it would lean toward me. But I was just I was just on fire that week. Like I was just <laughs> everything I was saying was funny, you know what I'm saying? It was like and I remember coming downstairs, like you know, it happened. He was like <laughs> 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 
like, you know, this is gonna be hard for me. Cause he was like, cause he was throwing, cause he, you know, cause like, you know, his friends were laughing at him and shit. But there was a third man involved in the situation. The individual who had groomed her and married her when she was just 14, R. Kelly. Despite how sick this was and how much Kelly's behavior was an open secret in the game, Jay went ahead and made two collaborative projects with him. Meanwhile, Dame refused to take a dime from them. I don't want to be a part of that, so I'm not working with you. So I walked away from Weinstein, and then homie was, did do business with him. When it came down to R. Kelly, there was a conversation had about the moralness, like it's morally wrong to do a project with someone that we know raped my girl, or raped anybody for that matter. So I do know that that conversation was had, and I was really surprised that he moved forward with that relationship. I, I don't know Epstein, so I never had the chance to walk away from him. But I do know that when that project did come out, I didn't want any part of that project. I didn't want any of the money to go to Rockefeller or me when it came to Rockefeller. It was around the time that Jay was trying to kind of separate himself from us, and he was saying that he didn't want to be a part anymore. The idea that Hove must have known was echoed by Nas, who seemed to have suggested something similar at the height of his beef with Jay-Z. You can't tell me Jay didn't see a 14 year old girl come in the studio and sit on R. Kelly's lap. No. You can't tell me, you can't tell me that he ain't never seen a 14 year old girl come in the vicinity. You've seen it go down. Yeah. Uh, I've been around R. Kelly, I've been on a chair with him. I, I didn't see no 14 year old, but I talked to the man and I I've seen there's a little problem there. In the years that have passed since Aaliyah's tragic death, Dame has increasingly wondered if someone had something to gain from her passing away. And in recent years, people have felt that Jay and Beyonce are among those who might have had a hand in it, or at least had something to gain from her passing, including Jaguar White. By the way, wasn't this all around the time when Aaliyah died? Yeah. And Beyonce's solo career was struggling? Damn on your horn now, that fucking bullshit ass record. Mm. From the Austin Powers shit was some of the worst shit ever. They were having a hard time taking her solo, and then Aaliyah died. While Dame has never experienced explicitly said that Hove was the man involved, he has basically said that it's now up to his former friend and others to make it clear that there's no foul play. I know that there are people that benefited from her death, but I, I, it, for me, when I hear these conspiracies, I'm like, they, how could they be that powerful that they could get a plane or someone to crash a plane? Like, I, I don't want to say I, I, I'm underestimating people, but I don't give people like that would be, that's like, yo, that's the most illest gangster shit, some Pablo Escobar, you could actually get a plane to crash. And then a lot of rumors about me, like I sacrificed her and some dumb shit like that, you know, all those things. It, it, it's hard to, like, I don't want to believe that, but it does make me think it through, you know? So again, in this moment, just because there's so much gray area on a legal level, not what I'm saying suspecting but like you know this shit is now real or if it isn't real people are gonna have to prove that it's not real but he hasn't shied away from making some pretty wild claims about hove that echo some things that you might have been hearing about diddy during a particularly shocking interview dame dash alleged that jay followed in diddy's footsteps and spiked his drinks after a show there was this one time when my daughter was 16, uh, Jay had a show and my daughter wanted to go. So I'm like, yo, I'm not going to deprive my daughter. So, I, you know, I hollered at Jay, sent the kite and told him I wanted to go to a show with my daughter and they accommodated me, accommodated me to the fullest. People were really surprised to see me there, took pictures with everybody. And, and again, Emery's my brother, so I would hate to think that he was fucking around like that. Pause. But he kept asking me somebody. That was the first time I had tasted that douce. And I got ridiculously drunk to the extent, and my daughter and I were talking about this the other day, that I was like, yo, I, I don't get this drunk. Why am I so drunk? And I ended up wrestling with Kevin Hart, he pulled and he got me in a chicken wing. And I remember uh, Vaughn taping that shit. And I'm like, yo, why you taping, Vaughn? So I'm thinking, I'm like, damn, cause homie makes drinks too. And, and, and again, just if this is true, these are the things that I'm like, just reflecting on. And if, like, if, if I wouldn't have played everything completely by the book, complete honor, then I could have been compromised. For the most part, we've been focusing on Jay-Z. In a lot of ways, it makes sense that he's the one who's been on the front lines of the industry for almost 30 years, pulling strings and hustling his way to a billion dollars. Generally, you don't get that rich without getting your hands a little dirty. So does Beyonce have similar skeletons in her closet? Well, these days, people are beginning to think so. Recently, the video of Kanye's VMA escapade with Taylor Swift has been doing the rounds again on social media. But instead of the usual narratives about him stealing a young girl's thunder, people are now suggesting that he actively saved Taylor. Because the theory goes that if she hadn't given Beyonce any credit, it could have gone south for her. Check this out. Beyonce, whoo! She's old. You changed my life. You you sang that gospel medley, and the way you made me feel, I was like, I want to make people feel this way with my music. So thank you so much. You clearly are the artist of our lives. Hey, artist of my life is Beyonce in this album. For me. We appreciate that, and all us artists here, we fucking adore you. You are our light. 
and I love you. I always have, and I always will. Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. For EA fans, this whole scenario has been a real layup as it means that people are posting positive comments about him for a change. But even if there's nothing to really substantiate that theory, it doesn't change the fact that she has lost 4 million followers since March 2024. If you're keeping tabs, that's around the same time that things started to get wild with Diddy's case. And just as Jaguar White has been going at Hove, there are people inside Beyonce's inner circle who have suggested that there's darkness underneath the surface there as well. Identifying himself as her former bodyguard, a TikToker who goes by the name of Uncle Ron has started sharing some wild stories about Beyonce and Hove only for those TikToks to also be taken down. For one thing, he said that she had a pretty severe addiction and this was for Hove's benefit. See, hardly nobody knows, but I'll say it, man. Yeah, Beyonce's on drugs. She's been on them for a long time and you keep her that way. Y'all wish it what you wish it to stay on top. But there's one thing about me, bro. I can't be bought. In a separate video, he threatened to expose them, claiming that they might take drastic action to silence him with the kind of dirt he had on them, including but not limited to them ending other R&B singers' careers and even their relationship being a sham. Beyonce and Jay-Z will do anything to destroy anyone who speaks out against them. Hey, I get the threats, but you have to remember one thing. I know your deepest secrets. I know so much about you and what you've done. I know so much on how you got what you are, how you stepped on the many people, Beyonce, how you guys ended Carrie Hilson's career because she said something about you. That's how hateful you guys are, how you step on anybody to stay on the top. So remember, your relationship was a business relationship, financial, to get to the top, to, be, be, to become billionaires. There's no love there. From there, Uncle Ron continued, claiming that he would drop evidence if they ever challenged him. Remember, all the receipts, all the proof, the old school footage, I still have it. Now, it's hard to validate if a lot of what he's saying is fact, but there are comments from Carrie Hilson from years ago where she tries to explain why she disappeared from the music industry for seven years after shading Beyonce on the track, Turn It On. Although she didn't go too much into detail, it's clear that there were repercussions for that. It's the price you pay, you know, when, you know, when you're early in your career, you feel that you have to listen. And when you buck, they buck harder and they make threats and those threats are huge ones and you 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 know what i mean you don't you don't feel like you have a choice i really didn't feel like i had a choice it was do this or this will happen and i'm young i'm early 20s and i'm like uh i they're like sing this song you don't have it you know you're here for a couple hours i go to town it's that it's the whole if you don't then blink so you you learn though you learn to fight harder I didn't have um, enough fight in me in my, I was maybe 20, 21, I didn't have enough fight in me. But the whole thing gets even crazier because unfortunately, just months after unveiling his TikToks about Jay and Beyonce, Uncle Ron's family would take to his TikTok to announce that he had passed away. Let's make this clear. No one is saying that Hov and Beyonce did anything. After all, he could have died of natural causes. But when you consider everything that's emerged as of late, you can bet that this shirt isn't going to stop the conspiracy theories from coming. And who knows, if any of this is true, they might end up in a cell right alongside Diddy. If you didn't know by now, hip hop is full of wild conspiracy theories. And if you want to get more acquainted with more of them, just check out some of the videos on the screen. As always, I want to thank y'all for watching today's video. Don't forget to drop a like and subscribe for your boy. And I'll catch y'all on the next one. Peace.